Hi, welcome back to Colf GRC. So today's video is mainly to look at this. This is a jumper T light. Recently released, you've probably seen some videos on it. I've had it a bit now. I wanted to wait till I had it a little bit before I do a video. But the other point of this video is really to talk about the evolution we've had in the RC industry over the last few years. So two to three years ago, everybody was flying on the Tyrannis that were flying quad. If you flew planes, you probably had Spectrum or JR or Fataba. And they were your choices, quite expensive, the market was expensive. Uh, Spectrum, who I don't rate at all, even their DX6 was coming in at around 180 quid. Obviously it's single protocol, you can only use it with their receivers. The Fataba were even more expensive and JR, unfortunately. I don't think, they're, well they are with us now, but they're not McGregor JR anymore. Um, so these people have had the market. And then came multi-protocol. Uh, and even before you could get the jumpers, you could get these things. These things were, uh, you could fit these on the back of, I think, you have to forgive me, I think it's a Hobby King X9 or something, I don't know what make it. Turner GX9, you could fit one of these on the back on and get multi-protocol out of it. It wasn't as simple as that, you had to fit a program onto it and do a bit of programming. But you could get it, and that's what you could do. And then you could have multi-protocol, so you could fly Spectrum, you could fly Fataba, but only a limited range of Fataba. And you could fly FR Sky. So you didn't have to buy a Tavarnis anymore. But if you had a Tavarnis, you could plug this in the back of your QX7 as well and fly that way. Then Jumper came. And Jumper brought out this first. And this was the T8 SG, the original that started it all off, if you like. This runs on deviation software, does not run on OpenTX. And a lot of people didn't like it because of the fact that it was more difficult to program than OpenTX. In reality it probably wasn't but people were used to OpenTX and that's what they liked. Um, decent little transmitter this, uh, great for flying on your fun fly stuff and certainly this became very very popular because of the Bugs range. MGX had a range of quadcopters if you've never heard of them called Bugs and they did the 6, the 3, the 8 and all these were compatible with this with a upgrade to the firmware when it originally came out now it's i think it comes it, this one's standard with it and they became popular and these things started to start to see a lot of youtubers having these that flew the toy market that reviewed i used to review the toy market and you'd bind stuff up to this so you didn't have to use the epoxy controller it came with and it was all good nice transmitter i think these came in around 80 or 90 pound when they first came out and they were quickly replaced by the t8 sg's um, super, or I can't even remember which one it was, the yellow one now, and then they brought one out and it had Hall Effect gimbals, then it moved on to the T12, and so forth and so forth, until we've got to where we are today. So, Jumper came out with that, and then, after a little bit, they decided they wanted to make a light radio, so they have done this before. So, before we had the Jumper T light, we had the TASG light. So... I've, I did a video on this a long time ago. If you've never seen one, I'm not that surprised because it wasn't popular. Because it is a pile of crap. This thing is absolutely awful. It runs on limited protocols. The sticks feel truly horrendous. Now you can fly this. I did a video of me flying something on it. And for indoor use, I wouldn't even... No, I, I'll take that back. It's not even good for indoor use. This thing's got... The resolution of the sticks are completely terrible. You're going to struggle to fly this. And I think if you can, you can make the stick stay in corners. And so that, that's your spring loaded stick, but obviously you can still stick it up in a corner. That's how bad it is. You can press it back and you can eventually get it to go spring back again by pressing it in. Absolutely horrendous. It came with the same soft firmware on the original T8SG, ran on deviation. But was a complete disaster. Didn't sell well. I think they were about 50 odd pounds. Something like that when it came out. I got mine reasonably cheap. I think on a Banggood offer. It was still far too much. And then of course they progressed. They moved on to the T12. Which was a fantastic transmitter. They moved on to the T16. Eventually. And now they're on obviously the T18. So this is the T18. That they have out which rivals Radio Masters and was what people used to fly with. So this is Tavarnish size, Spectrum size, Fataba size. Yeah, so although the form factor may have changed, the original sizing and the, lay the layout is the same. Trims on the front, 
full-size gimbals and now we have full-size screens that we've got used to but lately the trend has developed and we've moved on to or it appears to be moved on to game style of controllers so before we had any of these we had the uh, Tyrannis X-Lite which I think that's why I can't remember what it was actually called but it was a small form factor controller handheld size like these and I had one and I didn't really like it because at the same time I had the going to test me the fly sky I can't remember what it's called Nirvana which I actually really liked but it had no backup on it and it soon fell away to the waste I don't even own it anymore but again I, I really like the transmitter I think the resolution of six are good and I flew well with it and then we've got to where we are today so the tango came out a uh, variation of tango so tango t one if tango one if you like came out a few years ago and now we've got the tango two this is the pro version and this is crossfire so if you want to fly crossfire these are fantastic and then on the back of this i have a module so this makes it uh, all in one if you like but it's cost me 240 quid to get to this point or 300 dollars ish something like that and then we have what's come out this is the latest from jumper this is the t light it's a small four factor radio the same as the fr sky version and obviously radio master have one of these coming out but it doesn't appear to be here yet and i have a screen that flips down i believe so you've got two position switch three position switch two position switch three position switch gimbals on the front of here you've got all your trims and then you've got your enter buttons and these are the ones for scrolling up and down your menu it has come it comes with a small screen but it is readable I have no problem with this screen. Doesn't come with a sound file on when you get this, you have to put your own on. Doesn't come with an SD card and it doesn't come with a battery. But bizarrely enough, in the box with this, you get a battery holder with a little box to put your 18650 in. Okay, but you don't actually get an 18650. Word of warning, you'll see loads of YouTube videos on this and people saying the battery doesn't fit well. You've got to... Um, Bender springs, that's actually not true. You just have to get an 18650 with the top on. So you can get flat tops 18650s or you can get the ones that have a traditional little post on like you would on a double A battery. That's what you need for one of these. And it fits absolutely perfectly. You'll get no issues whatsoever. Your battery goes in here. Battery life, not great. But it depends obviously on what battery you put in it. With this one, I'm probably getting three hours out of it. On the back of here, you get a little sticker that normally on there that falls off because they didn't use very good glue to hold it on because they presumed everybody would take it off. And then out of here, you have a module bear. And this is where your module would screw in. So just bear with me one second and I shall get the module to show you. So this is the module you get bear you get with it. This comes in the box with a USB cable and some nice stickers. That actually are really nice stickers you get with it. And then you get this. So this little bay goes in the back. This connector goes through this slot here. Very easy to take the back off, by the way. Six screws you get in. There's not much inside here, so you're not going to damage anything. It's quite empty in here. It weighs nothing, by the way. And then this goes on here, and then screw you screw it onto the back with three screws. Uh, is it three? Yeah, one, two, three. And then that goes there, and then you plug your module in. So what I hate about this, and what I don't really get, is that when you fit this and it is in place, which is there, you still have this connector, these wire bits showing at the bottom. You don't obviously have the wire because the wire is inside, but you can still see the ports. I find the whole thing a little bit bizarre. This seems rushed and ill, badly manufactured. There's no need to have it like that at all. The Tango has one on the back. All right, the Tango is a much more expensive radio. I'm don't get me wrong. But this bit that goes on the back of a Tango isn't expensive. I think they're eight quid for this whole unit with the inside board and everything. And look at the difference. Admittedly, this is a more expensive radio and this is a budget offering. But still, I feel they could have done something a little bit better there. So the main bit of this, what does it fly like? It flies okay. I don't think the resolution on the sticks is brilliant, but it's not bad at all. When you've flown something like the full size radios, there's always going to be a bit of a compromise and the compromise for these is you've got smaller gimbals so you've got less movement 
and, and you have to get used to that. And you do after a bit. Um, I have seen YouTubers saying they're using this as a daily driver and I am a little bit confused at that. And there's a load of reasons I am. The main one being the fact that these, <laughs> compared to that or the Radio Master, there's no co comparison. This isn't as good a radio. It just isn't. But having said that, it's 56 quid. Oh, I don't remember what it is. 50 odd pounds. It's not meant to be. But the, one of the biggest problems is how you fly this. So if I, I'm a pincher, so I fly like that, but I might fly some on top. And there's your problem. I've got not the biggest hands in the world. This switch here placement is absolutely appalling. They tried to fit too many switches on, in my opinion. You don't need all these switches. Or if you do want to fit the switches, you could have had two at the back. Because, because of this, they're just too close together. Far too close together, these switches. It's too easy to knock one like that when you're flying and catch a switch, which you obviously don't want to do. You could disarm your quad, depends how you set it up. And obviously you can get around that by doing uh, different programming, but I find it, it's a bit unforgivable to have done that in the first place. The menu buttons are ill-conceived. It's difficult to go up and down the menus. You do get used to it after a bit, but it's not intuitive like it is on other radios. And the trim buttons on the front, they've put that on to get a to get the whole market. So quadcopters, don't, you don't use these if you're flying quads, but obviously if you're flying planes and helis, you need these. And they've hid them on the Tango, uh, they hid them on the X-Lite, um, but on this you can see them. And it makes the front look a little bit busy. Trim and the, centre. They are quite small. Trim centre. But you can get to them, but... I think when you're flying, when you're flying, you're trimming out a model, they're very close together. But you can do it, and they have bravo for them for putting it on there. I think with this radio, they've gone too far. I don't think anybody expected trims on the front, and anybody expected all these switches. If they'd have just put maybe two, three switches, which is probably all you need for quads, uh, maybe put this switch right in the centre there, so you could never catch it and have two it there and then you could have had no trims on the front because no one's expecting it and then make things better make that module bay better the feel of this is quite nice it's got a nice textured coating and i do like that but there's a lot of things on here that are just so close to being great but not quite there so the battery that goes in the bay here is obviously a great idea, but you don't get one. You don't get a t you don't get a card, so you have to go find the open TXSD card, put it on. Make sure you've got the right one, so it doesn't come up with firmware conflicts. So you can have sound if you want it, and store your models, etc., etc. I I decided to put it on because I wanted the sound on, but you don't have to do that, of course. But it, wouldn't it be nice if it had just come with an SD card with it on? To me, this radio should have been one or two things. It should have been for this price, but less functionality and make it more user-friendly and a bit better quality. Or charge another 15, 20 quid on top of this, because I still think this is sell if it was 80, 90 quid and it had the, the great finish that other radios have, that it had a far better system than this, that it had maybe dials down here like the Tango has. Because the Tango, the way that system works is really good. It's expensive. It's overpriced. Do not get me wrong. I'm not saying for one minute that isn't an overpriced radio. It is. This is almost great, but it's not quite. Do I think it's worth 50 odd quid? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For 50 odd quid, you're going to get a radio that will be great for a starter. But that's what I think it is. I think this is a beginner's radio and I don't think it'll be a daily driver forever. But I think it's a good thing to start on because it's got multi-protocol. Uh, the thing I haven't talked about yet is the one that's probably the most common one on the internet that this battery will not power crossfire properly at or well it certainly won't do one more but it depends what you want if you're flying crossfire and you've got would you want to fly crossfire three miles away on an expensive model with this radio well I wouldn't so I don't think that's if that's really relevant to the conversation I think if you want to fly crossfire and you've got crossfire in your models and you want to use this, maybe you're happy at flying at 50 watts or 100 watts, which is going to be okay on the battery on. It's only when you hammer this thing and start knocking up 500 watts or a watt. If you're running low on this, if you're running low crossfire on this, that's going to be fine. And then you can then progress to a different radio rather than this.
So if we crossfire obviously in the T18 or the Radio Master, then you can get the full range. But if you've got crossfire and you're wanting to buy this, or you've got a quad that's got it and you're starting off, start with this. Put your crossfire module on the back by all means, but just fly at a low wattage. Don't take the risk. That's it. That's the end of the video. I hope it's been informative. If you've bought one of these already, and you disagree with what I've said, that's absolutely fine. Uh, but this is just my point of view. This is what I think about it. Is I've owned every jumper, I think. Yeah, I've had every single jumper. I think the company's great. I think they've lost a bit of focus since Radio Master split, and they did that split. And I think they're trying to compete with each other. But I think competing with each other is going to be good for us because we're going to get cheaper products. And certainly from today to three or four years ago, where you pay £200 for a transmitter that was garbage and had one protocol, now you can get something like the... Well, I paid 200 quid for my Radio Master with Crossfire with three receivers. Big difference. So, thanks a lot. Have a fantastic day.